sit, sit. This is Stanley. In this video, I'm gonna go over some, tri uh, some tricks and tips that you can use if you have a dog that does not like to come to you on command. Now, uh, Stanley uh, is a little bit of a reactive dog, so if he starts barking at one point, uh, not unusual. Um, all right, so the first thing is we're in an enclosed yard, and I have a lot of clients where the dog will not come to them in the enclosed yard. Well, why does that happen? Usually when I have the dog out here, the dog is having a great time, and there's this bastard squirrel, and he keeps on climbing down the tree and right along this fence, and man, this is my territory, and I'm the guard dog because I don't have any rules. We talked about that off camera. So incorporating rules will help with that. So he's out here yelling at the squirrel, thank you, and that was, that was Stanley, he's really <laughs> quiet. So basically he's yelling at the squirrel, going, you son of a gun, you better not come out here anymore. You're worried your neighbors are gonna hear it, and we live right over here, I was gonna say we. Um, and so we like come out here and we ask Stanley, Stanley, come on buddy, we take him inside and then we close the door. And Stanley's like, well shoot, I was just having the time of life telling off that squirrel, you asked me to do something, I listened to you, and then when I listened to you, the fun ended. So you're a buzzkill. When I listen to you, the fun stops. So in the future, I'm just not gonna listen to you. I've got four legs, you've only got two. You'll never catch me. So for this, what I do is I have some really high value training treats and I'm gonna simulate this. The camera will just stay right there. So basically, when, and let's say Stanley's out here farting around. I'm gonna run out, come out here, not run, walk out here and I have these really good treats. I'm just walking to the yard and Stanley's, because I have the treats is hanging out with me, but usually Stanley's been jumping around. So what I do is I just stand here like this and eventually the dog will come over to you. When the dog comes over, come. And then I walk back. Let's say this is 15 paces to where I was. Then I walk back, go in the house, and I don't do this when he's barking, I do this when he's just hanging out. The next time I come out and I go, let's say that was 15 paces, then I come to 14 paces. I just stay here. Come, that's a little eye contact thing. Uh, but you won't do that for you. Normally don't treat a dog for barking you like that. So what I do is now I'm at 14 pace and I just stand here and wait. And when he and he runs around, I'm not asking him to come, I'm not even looking at it. When he does come, come, and then I walk back inside. So remember, just say come, don't say good come or Stanley come, just come. Go inside, wait a couple minutes, then come back outside. This time you stop at 13 feet. Come, and that's what'll happen. You won't get to 15 before he just starts automatically coming to you. So now, instead of saying every time I ask you to come, it represents the end of fun, now, most of the time, they just come out and they give me like five or 10 treats. It just all I gotta come to him. And eventually, it's closer and closer and closer. And eventually, you just open the door. He runs up to you, you throw the treat in the house. And I would suggest you come up with a command that means house. So th throw the treat in there. If you wanna use a little Spanish, when he looks it up, say casa. And then you, now the first couple times you do it, throw it in, let him go get it, say casa, then let him come back out. And so you do that, because if you start closing the door right away, it's like, oh. So that's the whole, that's why you, you wanna sell me some uh, timeshare. It's kind of what they do. They give you a free vacation at the end. They swat, swat you, swat you. So basically, so the first couple of times he gets to come in and out. Then eventually you throw it in and close the door. And every time you say casa, so casa means to go inside and get a treat. So it's a positive thing. He likes doing it and he doesn't have a problem doing it because he's not doing anything better. So then later on, when you come out here, he just starts running up to you automatically. And if he's distracted, you say, Stanley, come. All right, now a couple other little tricks for the recall. I call this the science of the hand. So for, dog, for your dog, what I like to do, and I have nothing in my hand, I'm gonna show you real quick. Stanley. Come. The lower you go, the more it's for the dog. So before you call the dog, I'm doing this sideways so you can see that I want a 90 degree bend with this part of your arm parallel with the ground and keep it parallel. So uh, sit, Stanley. So I'll do it with this arm. So I start out here. The lower you go, the more it's for the dog. I'm gonna lower my arm and it's gonna cause him to come over. Now, I also expect the dog to sit when it comes to me. So I go like this. Let's try it. There we go. And I raise it over their head to make them sit. Come. And uh, if he raises his paw up, then I would bend my el elbow away or get somebody to sit. That's my way of saying that's not what I want. As soon as the butt hits the ground, then I lower it again. So what, I, what you want to do is you want to have your hand in a slightly cupped hand. I put a treat in there. I don't want him to see that my hand, if I go like this, he sees it's there. Well, then later on, if I go like this, he sees it's empty. So from his perspective, he can't tell if this is full or not, and it's empty, but for him, it sure looks like it's full. I go lower, put his over his head, and I put a treat there now, come. So this is a nice way to use body mechanics to help the dog come to you. So what I typically do is Stanley, let's, let's say he's way over there, I hold my hand out like this before I call him, while he's not paying attention to me. And then as soon as I call him by name, I can say come, but 
if I just, let's say I just say, well, for puppy class, we usually say, just say the dog's name. But I can say Stanley or come, and he looks at me. As soon as he looks, I start lowering my hand. You don't want to do it here? I'm across my body, so that's why. All right, well, let's do it this way. So there's a little bit of, I went through an exercise on how to teach them to respect boundaries, and I think that we have some carryover. That's why he's acting that way. All right, so this is, uh, these are great ways. This is not, I'm going to show you one other thing. But these are ways to, uh, some ways to entice him and to motivate him or reward him for coming to us. Now, we also talked inside the house about something I call passive training. Passive training is a little bit of what we're doing here. So except for we're showing him that we do have a treat. Passive training is just in the house. Every time he comes to you, pet him and say, come. When you're out here hanging out, there's a couple of chairs. I'm guessing you guys probably hang out in Southern California. It's nice out here. So you're hanging out, and he's over there. Every time he comes over here, come and let him go play. So now 99 out of 100 times when I come to the human, they pet me or give me a treat. One out of 100 times I have to go inside and the fun is over. But if you give me an opportunity to do something, 99% chance of having fun, I'm going to take that chance 100% of the time. So, and dogs, the way I talked about earlier, the way that dogs' brains work off camera, is the more they do something, the more they're likely to do something. Can I have that? Let me just toss it. All right, so this is like a 20, I can't remember, 25, 30 foot lead. So when you're doing this, I'm gonna first, I'll show you a little leash handling. Got it a little bit uh, tangled up, there we go. Hey buddy, yes. So that's a play, you see he's kind of bouncing around. So I just wanna attach it to him. Sit, sit. And always try to get the dog to come to you. See how he's coming and then darting away? So I talked to you in the house about how we break things down as small steps. So I'm going to smash this because he doesn't want me to reach for his collar. So I'm going to do this. Stanley, sit. Now this is fun. He's having, he's showing off a little bit here. <laughs> so um, <laughs> this is an illustration. I don't know if you see him in the camera, but he's really tearing ass. Uh, <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna have you come over and attach this for me because I'm gonna keep this relatively short. It's, my videos are never short, but yeah. it's taking extra 10 minutes to do that. All right, so this is a long lead. And <laughs> the reason I did that is I don't have the gloves. Now this is, uh, I forgot that this is one of the, this is the old one. They make some of these that will not burn your hand. This would have burned my hand if I would have tried to, or if I hold the end of it. Hey buddy, yeah. All right, you can go get that one. I just want him to cross me so I can actually get the leash. There we go. Uh, now I'm not going to let it slide out of my hand. That's where you get the where you get the uh, the rope bird. So a lot of times I'll get like those cool, uh, not cool. I'm just joking. The hand, the gloves with no fingertips on it, to save your hand. So this is a long line. Now when you do this, a little bit of leash work. What you typically do is do it here. And you go in figure eights. I'm gonna show you how to do it here. So I'm putting a figure eight. If I just go into a circle, it gets tangled. So now I'm gonna have the uh, guardians, we're actually not gonna leave here, we're just gonna do it all right here. So if I walk this way and he takes off, so I'm holding him with two hands. And if Stanley takes off, Stanley, go get him. I can let it out, and then as I'm walking towards it, there we go. Now if I wanna call him, I'm gonna do a simulated call. Now you want to have a treat when you're doing this. We use the lead so we can do this in a big park so he has the illusion of freedom. He's got 20 yards. So make sure you're doing it as you follow him, kind of keep on riding up like this. So you just do a figure eight this way and this way. If you just do a circle, like I said, they get tangled up. And there's videos on how to, um, how to, how to handle the leash that I can forward to you if you forget how to do it. Stanley. That's he has a little cortisol in his blood. That's that, that twitchiness and jumpiness. So when you're doing this, since I have the, I'm holding the leash like this, I'm going to move this to the other hand so I can get in here. So what you're going to be doing is have, being at a park with a long 20 or 30 foot lead, the places where he doesn't listen to you. Now, don't do this at first when you have a lot of squirrels or other dogs or whatever that he's reacting to, because once he's above threshold, he's not going to listen to you. So you're walking around the park, and he's having a good time. He's sniffing around, having a good time, doing his thing. Every once in a while, I'm just like, come. Come. And then he gets to walk away. 
So the idea is we give him the illusion of freedom, but in case it is legal, he's not allowed to be off leash. But this, and if he wants to, I've got plenty of line to let him go. But I can keep him safe if I need to and move him away. And that way you can have him practice coming towards you from progressively longer, longer periods of time or distance. Stanley, come. Now for dogs, the lower you are, the more accessible you are. Front facing, like I talked about, is confrontational. So for me, there's he's a little standoff. So I go like this off to the side. Stanley. Come. I wasn't going to pull him. I was going to do the simulate. The simulate is just running your hand on the leash. So he feels the vibration of it. You can pull him if you want to, but you don't want to. Uh, that would be an emergency situation. Dogs have something called an opposition reflex. The more you pull on the leash, the more they will pull against you. They don't have any choice in the matter. It just happens. So that's why we use this really just for safety. And if he doesn't listen to you, lower, uh, lower yourself. Call him an excited voice. And we'll see if we do it again here. Stevie! Stevie! Puppy, puppy, puppy! I forgot your LA street dog. Now if you won't come... So leash kind of gives them, uh, it helps give them give up a little bit of control. They know that they have to come to you when they're on leash. Just make sure you keep on winding it up like this. Otherwise they get it tangled in stuff and he drags it around. Stanley, come. Come. And moving away. And he won't do that with you guys, I'm guessing, unless he uh, really wants to do something uh, that you don't want him to do. Uh, but for me, I think it's just because, again, he's not used to me. Um, Stanley. So it takes a little bit of practice and also making sure you have really good treats. I'm using chicken liver treats. This is beef liver. Stanley. Stanley. Come. Stanley. Come. This is a higher level of treat. So you saw the difference. The first treats I were using are very high level. This is the next level. So make sure you have a very, very high level that is commensurate with the situation that you're in. In the house, you practice with a cookie treat. Don't use milk bones, they give dogs cancer. <laughs> I have a yellow dye number five. Uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> uh, that's why I say it, a lot of people don't know that. But when we come out here, I might need to use like a beef treat, like a Zooks. When I'm doing the, in the park, I might need to use the uh, chicken liver treats. When I'm using in the park where there's squirrels or other things, I might have to use the, the beef liver. Stanley, come. And again, you're not pulling them, you're just kind of getting them started. Come. Treat goes in the mouth first. Here's the command word afterwards. Stanley, let's do one more and then we're going to wrap this one up. Stanley, come. Look at that bouncing step. That's what we're looking for. Sit. This is Stanley. These are some tips and tricks you can use if you come. If you have a dog that doesn't always come to you when you're outside.